So we need folks like this. We need observers. So we design space for pe where people can sit, people can watch, um, because those observers pay dividends to our natural surveillance. Natural surveillance is the second key. What we're trying to do there is create uh, eyes on the street, the Jane Jacobs idea, so that you can be seen 24-7 if possible. That's the goal. So when I went for a walk Sunday along the retail part of your downtown, um, there was a store that didn't have an occupant in it, and obviously they're going to be doing some remodeling inside, and it's all papered across the front. Whenever you do that, that disconnects from the sidewalk. So whether or not there's anything inside the store isn't the issue. The issue is now your glass isn't projecting a cue of natural surveillance to the sidewalk. So I like it when those uh, working obstructions on the windows just get removed and people can see and be seen. And if the workers are in there working, that's even better. Um, so it's just one little thing I notice. I was also challenged by a couple of store owners out on the sidewalk, which I thought was great. So they came out and they saw me taking pictures and they just said, hey, what are you doing? So for an offender, some store owner coming out and talking to them on the sidewalk scares the pants off them because they just want to be anonymous and they want to break in and they want to do the property crime without too much attention being drawn to them because that means real people have just seen me and they're trying to avoid that. So I did like some of the stuff that occurred on my walkabout on Sunday, especially talking to the store owners. So here's the idea of no blank walls. So you've got wraparound balconies, you've got a lot of glazing, you've got walkout connections occurring from different units out into the, this is a public sidewalk right next to a park. Um, all of this creates a lot of natural surveillance and modifies behavior of people, and it helps to mitigate crime. Variety stores, oh man. Don't get me talking about variety stores. So one of the challenges with this uh, and a lot of retail sectors is marketing is constantly kind of arguing with security and with SEPTED. Marketing, you know, wants to have the prominent spaces at the doors and entranceways because if Slurpees are on sale, you want people to know Slurpees are on sale. Um, the challenge is that both sides of the door and both window frames should be clear of any type of displays. There should be a real good line of sight right to the point of sale because that's a store that looks like a fishbowl. And if it looks like a fishbowl, then the police can see in at a glance and offenders don't like that. Offenders want to have all these windows boarded over. They want to have really high gondolas inside so you can't see the point of sale from the street, and conversely, you at the point of sale can't see out to the sidewalk. The challenge is that adult shoppers like to go into stores where they see other adults shopping. So if your windows are all covered with marketing posters or just displays, no one's able to see all the people that are inside your store. And if adults are drawn to other adults, then that would be a good thing to buy into. So that's the challenge with the retail sector that I find predominantly with the windows, because a lot of you have a lot of glazing, but when the market posters go up, you're reducing that sight line into your store. Even though they've got good gondola height here, it's these posters here. But they did keep the door open and they did keep this pane open, so that was the compromise there. Um, some retail sections in uh, Nanaimo, I forget, the Heritage Mall, I think they call this. Muse, Heritage Muse, yeah, thanks. Um, not a bad place, lots of glazing, um, just some of the display windows were, were overpopulated with displays. But it's, it's fun enough to walk into because there's lots of glazing on all the stores and different angles to the design and the facades. It's kind of interesting until you get to stores like this. So your only window is now defeated with your poster paper. 
and your doorway is, you know, you're using it for a display rack. Um, that's kind of an opportunity for theft there, simply because as I walk by, I just help myself to the dress and keep walking. You have to be careful about, um, what do they call them, impulse purchase areas, where they want you to, to buy it on an impulse, but this is more like a theft impulse. And connections. So visual connections and physical connections. Don't like anonymous street corners. I always look to create some sort of activity on a street corner. Um, patios are great. Places where people are sitting and eating and socializing. Or just gathering areas where there's social connections as well as visual connections to the commercial and the retail. This is a thrifties in Victoria. Victoria, and they wouldn't put real glass there for me, so they put up the spandrel glass. So it, it projects the sense of surveillance, even though those aren't real windows. But again, all of this glazing, this glass, creates a safer stairway in this parkade. This is in the University of Louisville. When this parkade was finished, 30-40% um, of the monthly renters um, in the parkade right across the street, the very first day, took all their business right across into this parkade because it was so safe. So people are being drawn to safer venues. And as if I was a developer, I would start to use SEPTED as a selling feature to my designs, that it's SEPTED certified, if you want to call it that, or SEPTED approved. Um, there are some developers in the Lower Mainland that are now using that as a catchphrase for their developments. 